Hi! Welcome to Luxury and Moderation, where we appreciate the finer things in life without going overboard. This video is going to be a continuation of my stream of consciousness opinions on different luxury brands and just things going on in the luxury community. So if you haven't watched part one yet, please watch that first and then we will jump right in and continue on here. So the next brand I wanted to talk about was Dolce & Gabbana. And I was introduced to Dolce & Gabbana in 2004. 16 or 17 where I actually went to Italy Milan and I got a big talk from the Dolce Gabbana people they're talking about their background from Sicily and how there's a lot of inspiration from flowers because one of them either Dolce or Gabbana like his mom had a garden and they loved flowers and that really spoke to me because I love flowers and I was like wow this is such a beautiful gorgeous brand but obviously everything was insanely expensive um, so I just put it out of my mind. Well this past summer I just happened to walk into their boutique and I saw all these gorgeous designs you know the spring collection the summer collection all these different flowers carnations daisies uh, you know like any flower you can think of roses I'm sure they had a collection on it but they also have this really beautiful mosaic tile motif, um, which is uh, usually in their classic blue. This summer they had it in this magenta pink, which is a color that I love. So obviously I fell head over heels and I was like, I definitely have to own something from these collections. The spring collection was on sale when I went in over the summer. So I was like, okay, it's good to know this brand goes on sale. If I can snag one of these, you know, in the right time with the right percent off, like that would be amazing. I want to own a beautiful garment from Dolce & Gabbana. Well, then reality hit me in the face and I had to accept the fact that I am not rich enough to own designer ready to wear. I thought I could and I you know, really wanted to live beyond my means. And I really wanted to own, you know, this $4,000 dress. And I got sucked in, you know, the longer you look at these prices, the more normalized they become. And that's just not good. So again, the reason why I'm sharing this is because I wanted to share my experience in case others might be in the same boat, if others might be experiencing similar things that you're seeing all these influencers and celebrities wearing these beautiful gorgeous outfits and you're like oh well you know i'm playing the luxury handbag game now can i start playing the you know luxury ready to wear game some other people do have dolce gabbana tops or you know you recognize that skirt from a, some other brand and you start thinking that hey maybe i could do that you know i recognize those brands i recognize those products no <laughs> they're in another league they're in a league all by themselves where i feel like sure i could spend three four thousand dollars on this bag right here but i can use that bag multiple times a week um you can't really do that with ready to wear. Like I had to remind myself and really say to myself like, what are you doing? You are not that rich. You do not have that much disposable income. You cannot play with those big girls up there. And let's bring ourselves down back to reality. But I did want to give a shout out to Dolce & Gabbana that they have gorgeous things and I will admire them from afar. Next brand I wanted to talk about was Demilier or Demilier. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but this is a brand that's been popping up more and more. I've seen multiple ads for it. I've seen multiple influencers talking about it. And to tell you the truth, when I first saw my first ad for this one specific bag that they have, I was like, wow, I love that. And it was, you know, their raffia with leather, with black leather trim. And I was like, wow, like maybe I really need to learn what this brand is. Everyone's talking about it. What am I missing out on? And I was like, you know, maybe I should get this bag. It's much more affordable um, for this really elegant aesthetic. You know, why don't I go for it? Well, then I saw a very similar aesthetic with the Celine Triumph 
bag, you know, in one of their color variations, which was again in their canvas with a leather trim. And I realized, of course, that that was just the kind of aesthetic that I love, no matter what brand does it. Case in point, my Hermes Garden Party 36, you know, it has this canvas with the trim. And this kind of aesthetic is just like summer to me. It's relaxed, it's casual while still having that quiet luxury-esque feel and I adore it. So if I could get like everything in this kind of aesthetic, I would, for example, the Picotin bag, um, the Hermes Picotin. I'm not super into their Hermes Picotin, but there is a canvas Picotin, which I'm like, yes, please. So I just know that it's, you know, anytime there's a canvas with the leather trim, I am going to love it. So that really wasn't a special Demilier thing. It was just, you know, any brand can do this aesthetic when they feel like it. Even Longchamp now is coming out with this kind of aesthetic. Um, so now I'm like, ooh, like, let's look at that collection. Anyways, if you know of any other bags like that, please send them my way because I just can't get enough. And then when I compared the Demilier bag that I loved to the Celine Triomphe bag, that I loved, you know, very similar, very different price points. You know, one is in the hundreds, one is in the thousands. Myself, personally, I told myself, why would I go for the Demilier when I could go for the Celine? It's what, five, six times more expensive and I would have to save up longer for it. But to me, I know I'm a brand whore. I would want the Celine brand. And plus I do love that Triumph logo. I think it's very pretty. Like Minx for All here on YouTube, she says she's a magpie. I am as well. I like gold glittery things and I want the prestige of the Celine name. You know, uh, even though no one can tell if you don't know that it's Celine, it doesn't say Celine anywhere on there. But if you know, you know, you know, I want that versus the Demilier, which I'm sure the quality is you know just as good honestly you know the leather's probably just as good there's not that much leather on this bag um the canvas is probably great and i probably wouldn't worry about it as much because it is a lower price point but again because it is a lower price point it is more accessible and i want to feel like i have something that nobody else has you know that's who i am and i know that and so, you know, maybe in the distant future, I would want to aim for the Triumph bag versus the Demilier bag. But again, you might have the complete opposite. You know, you would be like, out of these two bags, very similar aesthetics, very similar quality. One is so much more affordable. Why would I get the more expensive one when I could get this less expensive one, right? So everyone has their own process and I'm just sharing mine. Finally, let's talk about Hermes. It's still, I think, the brand that gets the most like interest. Even though I think things have waned, you know, the past few months, a lot of influence on here have been like, oh yeah, luxury is dying. Um, you know, and there's a general like, hmm, it's not as hyped as it was, you know, the last year or so. Where am I at with Hermes? Um, again, if you saw my last video, I don't have an essay right now and I'm totally cool with that. I am very, very satisfied with just using my four bags and I count it as my Kelly, my Birkin, my Garden Party 30, and this Kelly Pochette, even though it's not technically a bag, I use it as a bag. I'm going to be using my Garden Party 36 as a work bag, which I am very, very excited about. I think that it is luxury without screaming in the workplace and it's elegant and grown up, but not too like serious. So I'm very excited about this. And of course, I know I am super, super lucky to have, you know, my core Hermes collection. Basically, I have the four core colors um, now, including the Etan color that I 
I'm so in love with. I do think I want a mini Lindy in a color. You know, since all of these four here, uh, these four leather bags here are in a neutral, I want to have a Hermes bag in a rich color at some point, but I am not in a rush at all. And I think Purse on Fleek here on YouTube said something super true, which is Hermes bags really aren't workhorse bags. They're not like the only bags that you can have in your collection and they will fill all the spots. They're actually quite specialized. As a practical person, you can't just have Hermes bags in your collection because my everyday bag is the Pochette Matisse and that is like the workhorse. That is what is the easiest to use. The Kelly, uh, the crossbody strap is not as long. It's, you know, you could make it crossbody, but it's like sits really high. It's really a shoulder bag and your know, shoulder bags can fall off. So it's, it's still a specialized bag. Um, this Birkin 30, it's gorgeous. And I don't worry about it because of the Epson leather, but it's quite bulky, you know, it's quite thick and if I am sitting at a very small table for lunch, I'm like, where do I put this if I don't have an extra chair? Um, it's like very fussy because then I have to go get an extra chair and like put this bag on there. I can't just like sit it in front of my food. I can't like put it behind my chair because it, it's not like it's gonna squish down, you know? Even my Garden Party 30, which I think is my second easiest to use bag, um, after the Pochette Matisse because I can just grab it, throw my things into the top and go and like it can carry a lot. Um, again, it's thicker, um, it's bulkier, you know, I can't always like squish it um, if I'm in a very tight space. Um, so it's just not as um, versatile. So I totally agree that they are just not ordinary people's workhorse bags. I'm still on my search for that perfect travel crossbody because I want to replace my Longchamp crossbody that I travel with right now. I just want something a little bit more elevated, but honestly, I haven't been able to find anything that is the perfect size with a zip in a material that I don't have to worry that much about. It's like, why am I trying to fix something that's not broken in terms of the Longchamp bag? But that's just me. And if you guys have any suggestions in that area, please let me know. So these were all my thoughts on luxury brands that I had to share today. As I mentioned, I definitely want to share what I got myself for Christmas, but that's only gonna come next February. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that video. Uh, but other than that, I wish you all a wonderful holiday season. It's been a very interesting year for me and I hope these videos are helpful. If you have any other questions, please leave them down in the comments below as I would love to be a resource for you. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.